This is my 12 step program. Step. Welcome back to Broken Bobby's Transformation page. In the late 80s, I became involved with drugs and would eventually become part of that lifestyle of trafficking, addiction, and violence. Over the next 20 years, I would be in and out of jail and prison. If you're thinking about trying something or you're dealing with addiction, your life don't need to go down the same path mine did. I hurt a lot of people, both physically and emotionally. These are my stories of how I transformed my life, and you can too. Let's get All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see by the title and the thumbnail, this is my 12-step program, step one. Now, I do things a little unorthodox compared to the way some people say that the program should be ran, but it's worked for me. I have 20 years sober. My sobriety date is August the 9th of 2004. So it's working for me, okay? Now, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy this sort of content, be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button, drop a comment, and tell me your sobriety date or if you're starting step one at this point, or if you're not ready even, drop a comment and let me know that as well. Uh, hit that notification bell and hit all so that anytime I drop a new video or I go live, uh, you will be notified and you can jump on it when you're ready. Uh, we, the lives have been doing really well lately. And, uh, you know, my objective is to help people, basically. Now, uh, a lot of my content is prison stories, county jail stories, and stuff like that. But uh, I feel really compelled to do these 12 steps as videos uh, in hopes that I can help somebody. And you know what? They might not get a lot of views, but that's okay. If the right person views the video, then the video is definitely worth it. So step one, what is it? <clears throat> word for word uh, from the NA Big Book, it is we admitted we were powerless over our addiction and our lives had become unmanageable. Okay, so let's break that down and let's not get too caught up in the verbiage of this. Uh, you know, nobody wants to think they're powerless and their life's unmanageable, but you have to take a good look at yourself. You know, they say in the in the meetings, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then it's time, right? Uh, you know, the thing is, for me, I would get, I always ended up in handcuffs. That's where my addiction would take me. You know, after many twists and turns along the way, it would end up in handcuffs and I'd be back in jail and I would feel relieved at times that I was going back to jail because my life was so unmanageable, okay? And I was powerless to my addiction. You know, I would get out, I'd be healthy, I had been eating good and exercising and stuff and, you know, talking to the wife and things and making a bunch of promises about how I was going to, you know, get two jobs if I needed to. And, you know, everything was going to be fine and dandy, right? And then I would get out and I would run into one of my old friends, friends, that was using. And five minutes later, I'd be high and off to the next episode until the handcuffs came. So, you know, basically, if you realize that you have a problem and you're, have, you're spiraling out of control, then it's time to take that first step, okay? What I would strongly suggest is find an NA meeting in your area. And this also applies to alcoholics. You could do an AA meeting. And I feel that they're interchangeable. Ultimately, it's about addiction or alcoholism. And, you know, our, our, we're not in control anymore due to our substance abuse or our alcoholism. So you got to find a meeting. Jump on Google and punch in NA or AA meeting near me. I'm going to refer to it as NA because my thing was narcotics. I was addicted to methamphetamine for about 15 years. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and that was my thing. But when I ultimately ended up in a program, we did NA meetings, we did AA meetings, we did Al-Anon meetings. Al-Anon meetings are for the family of the addicted. Okay, 
So if you didn't know that, so the NA, find an NA meeting, but you got to find the right one. Most places, there's tons of meetings going on all the time. And, you know, you're going to go, unfortunately, you're going to go to some meetings where they have the click, right? You know, the, the cool kids of the meeting that are, have been sober for a while and, and they think they're better than everybody else. And this may ruffle some feathers in that section of things, but honestly, I really don't care because ultimately what this is about is helping people to get sober. So you may go to a meeting and people may look at you sideways and stuff and act like they're better than you. Screw those people. Go find another meeting. Because eventually you're going, you know, you, you want to have your home meeting, which basically is the meeting that you feel comfortable at and that you go to at least once a week. Okay. Maybe you might want to go more early on, depending on how bad your addiction was. And it's different for everybody. Okay. You know, I, when I was in rehab, I remember there was a kid in there and I was a lot younger at that time too, but he told me he was he would get like a quarter gram of meth on the weekend and he, he <clears throat> and that's what he was doing like I was doing a quarter ounce a day so like my habit was ridiculous but you know I had a dealer's habit I was dealing and I was moving quite a bit of weight so it wasn't you know finan a financial burden if you will because I was selling a lot of it so therefore, I could do a lot of it, and it didn't cost me anything. But, uh, you know, besides my health and, you know, my family and all those things, right? So initially, when I found my first NA meeting, I was on what's called a court card. That That's a Southern California thing. I don't know. That may be going on in other places as well. All I know about is Southern California, so I'm going to tell it from that perspective, right? But... I was on a court card. They give you a piece of paper and it's got a bunch of lines. And when you go to an NA or an AA meeting, you find the secretary, you give them your court card. And when the meeting's over, it's signed. And, you know, basically you get however X amount of meetings a week that the court prescribes to you and you stay in good standings with the court. Okay. So now there were some places where they were abusing those court cards and, and the secretaries were using and you give them a little bit of the, the stuff that they want and they'll sign the card and you don't have to go to the meeting. Now, I'm not suggesting by any means that anybody should do that. If you're serious that you're powerless over your addiction and your life has become unmanageable, don't look for ways to uh, cheat the system. Like you need to be at these meetings uh, you can do Zoom meetings now, uh, Google online AANA meetings, and it should pop up, and you can do a meeting that way. And, you know, the thing is, when you go to the meeting, like when I went to the meeting, I was like super shy, like I didn't want to say nothing. Uh, I didn't even want to be there, honestly, but, you know, just listen. You know, they're going to ask for the newcomers to identify, you know, raise your hand. Hey, I'm Bobby. I'm an alcoholic or an addict and nothing else to say, you know, and then basically listen, listen to different people's stories. And at some point, you're going to want to find yourself a sponsor if, you know, you're doing it the 12 step way. Right. So what a sponsor is basically is someone that's going to advise you and help you navigate the, you know, rough terrain that's to come, you know, they're going to tell you to do certain things and they're going to help you to get further in your sobriety. Now, if the problem's a little worse than going to meetings and you just can't stay clean and it happens, I had that problem, then you may want to look at in-house treatment. What in-house treatment is 30, 60, 90 days, uh, some are even longer, like the Salvation Army Typically, is like six months or something. Uh, and there's some other ones that are longer like that. But I opted for a 90-day in-house. Okay. Now, I went in on a what's called a county bed. 
Now, once again, I'm talking about Southern California. It may be different in other places. Drop a comment and let me know so that when I do the lives and we're talking about this stuff, I can be a little more knowledgeable. Uh, I would greatly appreciate that. So these county beds basically are funded by the county. So it costs you nothing. Uh, if you're on probation or something of the sort, or you're on a court card, as I put it before, then a lot of times you're they're going to be able to help you get in there. Uh, you just got to call the center and tell them you, you're looking to get on a county bed and they'll take your number and they'll call you back when they have a bed available because a lot of times these beds are in big demand. So, uh, you know, that's what that is. So, uh, you know, the thing about it all is this though, if you're not ready yet, then you're not ready. The thing is, it's not going to happen until you're ready. Okay. Uh, you know, the thing is, I never thought I would get clean. And eventually when I was ready, it took a little bit of time in prison to give me that running start, you know, and then I got out and I went straight into a program because I knew myself and who knows us better than ourselves, you know? So, uh, so if you're not ready, I get it. You know what I mean? I appreciate you watching the video. I wish you the best of luck with it because with the fentanyl on the rise and everything, overdoses are out of control. Uh, I pulled up a stat just for this video and between April of 2023 and 2024, roughly 101,000 people overdosed fatally from, uh, you know, illegal narcotics. Now, to put that into perspective, if you've ever watched college football on the weekend, uh, Penn State, the you know college football team, the stadium they play in holds a, around 106,000 people. So, you know, we always hear these statistics, right? Oh, 101,000 overdoses, 90,000 overdoses last year, whatever. And you don't really think too much about it, right? Think about that football game. Everybody there no longer alive. That's a lot of people that are dying from this stuff. So, you know, if you're not ready, like I said, I wish you the best of luck. Be safe out there, guys. Uh, if you are ready, then it's time to take step one and find a meeting or an in-house treatment program. Remember, step one is we admitted we were powerless over our addiction and our lives had become unmanageable. Is your life unmanageable? Are you powerless over your addiction? You know, uh, do you, are you a functioning addict as some people call themselves? How many jobs have you had in the last year? You know, you, yeah, maybe you're functioning, but you know, if you're switching jobs every two or three months because of your addiction, you have a problem. Okay. And I'm not here to beat anybody up. That is not my objective at all. My objective is to assist people in finding sobriety and living a better life. It is doable. Believe me, guys. Uh, I, Like I said, I was an addict for about 15 years. Couldn't get right at all. And then one day the light came on. You know? The thing is, you have to surround yourself with the type of people that are living that sober life. If you're hanging around a bunch of people, like, you have to make that change. The people that you think are your friends, take the drugs out of the equation or the alcohol out of the equation. What do you have in common? If you have stuff in common, great. You know what I mean? But a lot of times, and what I found with myself, and this was really painful for me, all the people that I thought were my friends when I got clean, I didn't want necessarily want anything to do with them and they didn't want nothing to do with me because I wasn't living that lifestyle anymore. So I took step one. I admitted that I was powerless over my addiction and that my life had become unmanageable. And I checked myself into that rehab. The first one I walked out of, you're not going to necessarily get it right the first time. I hope you do. But you know, I, by the time I got it right, I was on my third in-house rehab. 
Okay, I had done two prior to going to prison. And then the one that I did after prison was the time that I finally got it right. Now, I don't participate in NA meetings anymore. And that may be a little controversial too. But the thing is, I'm living that sober life today. I've been living that sober life since 2004. Okay? And that doesn't make me any better than anybody else. I'm not trying to say that by any means. All I'm trying to do is give my experience to, to others to help them to achieve what I have, which is sobriety. So uh, the cornerstones of my sobriety are family, fitness, and freedom. Family is my support group. Uh, they were always there for me, whether I was in my addiction or not. And now they get to reap the benefits of a sober me, which I think is fantastic. And I hope they feel the same way too. Fitness. Uh, I, you know, the thing is, if you're early in your recovery, go hit the gym for a couple hours. Like it, you will leave there feeling fantastic. And, uh, it's, just awesome, I think, you know, and freedom being the third one, okay, freedom not only from incarceration, but freedom from addiction as well, because when you're addicted, you are not free, even if you're on the streets, you're not free, you're always looking for that next high, and, you know, you're just, it, it's not a good way to live, you know, so I'm not preaching to anybody. I hope I'm not coming off that way. I really do care. And, uh, you know, if you're new to recovery, welcome. If you've been doing this for a while, keep doing your thing. You know, the, I, I believe in the newcomers. I believe in everybody. If I could do it, you could do it. So uh, do me a favor. Drop a comment down below. And... Tell me your sobriety date. If you're new to recovery, drop a comment and tell me that as well. You know, if you have three days or five days or one day, that's the most amazing thing ever. You know, uh, the, the, those one or three or five days eventually turn into five weeks and five years. And, you know, that's kind of how it works. So uh, I will leave you guys with this. First, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button. Like I said, drop a comment. Give me your sobriety date. Or, uh, you know, if you're new to recovery, yeah, still give me your sobriety date. If you're not ready, then put you're not ready. I get it. I wasn't ready for a long time. I was lucky enough to make it back to where I was able to get it right. So, uh, you know, uh, also hit that notification bell so that anytime I drop a new video... Or uh, I go live, which I'd like to do on the weekends at night. Uh, you can check those out. Uh, the li lives are really good. I enjoy the lives a lot more than I do doing videos, if I'm being perfectly honest. Because I like that interaction with people. Uh, and I'll leave you with what I always leave you with. Don't look at the mountain. Just start climbing.